Grout 4.3 Release Candidate 3 has just been released and this means that the official version is literally around the corner. Today, we will check all the details out. First of all, I will quickly go over the exact uh, post that you are able to find in the official, in the official Grout site. So as any other kind of uh, release candidates, uh, there are um, no, no amazing new things or critical uh, bug fixes, so we shouldn't be expecting uh, much interesting stuff. And here, for example, it says that um, they believe that they have addressed the ones that could prevent users from having a better experience in uh, 4.3 than in the current 4.3 uh, stable branch. So this basically means that indeed everything that should be done and working correctly in order for us to have 4.3 working correctly and ready to be used for everybody is already there. This means that indeed we shouldn't be waiting much more time uh, in order to have the official release. Now I took the time to actually go over all the new highlights and new stuff. I didn't actually find anything uh, wor worth mentioning. You can still take a look at the full list uh, over here. And as you can see, they are super few because we only have 40 improvements. Um, now I will basically download over here the version. I am on Windows, so I will download um, this one. And, and as usual, I'm going to be having this zip file. And uh, this is the zip file that I will right click. WinRAR and I will extract it over here and I will get the uh, corresponding version, okay? So here we have it, release candidate uh, number 3. So first of all, I want to go quite quickly over what new changes we should be expecting in uh, without 4.3. So now I am in a uh, release candidate 2 because the new thing that we have over here is that we can actually check for new updates automatically. This is a setting that you actually have to enable so you have to go to settings and here in network mode you select online. Okay, If you have this you will be able to check automatically for updates and as you can see for example here it will tell me that there is a new uh, release candidate. And we're coming back here to release candidate number 3. Also in the settings, we have directory naming convention. So here you have different naming conventions that you can use in order for naming your directory uh, for when you want to create a new project. For example, if I select a snake case, whenever I create a new project, the project path will be named following that pattern. But if I select Pascal case, I will have it named like that. Of course, this isn't something that will add a lot to the engine but well small things that could improve at least a little bit the the overall experience now instead of the engine we do have some things that are quite interesting um so the first thing has to do with time maps uh we used to have basically the time map node but well now it is marked as deprecated basically this means that it's not longer going to be receiving any kind of any kind of update and also that in the near future it may be deleted. Therefore, Groot added this new node, Time Map Layer. I will actually add both of them so that we can see the differences between them. Of of course, they are super similar in terms of the core. The they both used some kind of style set that uh, we have to create. But the key difference is the fact that. Uh, here in the time map you can create your layers over here but here each time map layer node will work as a completely separate time map layer being able to modify its color uh, or whatever so for example let's say that you have here your time map okay with your tile set so i will just load in here the the growth icon quite quickly so uh now i will just paint here some uh, without icons over here uh, so this is layer 0 and I will go ahead and add a new one and in that layer I will paint more let me do it like this and I will add the last layer okay and I will paint in this one just like this and now I will simply modify their colors okay um, I also have this warning icon saying that, well, um, it is indeed uh, being deprecated, okay? So, 
Now what happens is that, well, here you can uh, control by separate each layer. Uh, and you have this menu to toggle around them. Um, but well, the time map layer, it is still uses a tile set. Once again, I will quickly use the without icon. And well, as you can see, it has this, the exact same functionality. Okay, we can paint around and whatever. But well, we can, for example, here by separate, modify their color. Okay. Um, so the main idea is that instead of having just one node with different layers, you have a one time map layer node for each layer that you want your time map to have. Now, what happens if you have some project with a time map that you had already created? Um, so actually, you can just go to this button over here and click extract time map layers as individual time map layer nodes. And this will basically separate each layer into a new time map layer node. And then what you can also do is to uh, change this uh, node to a node 2D. Okay, so you will have it wrapped up. I will delete this one. So now here you have converted successfully your time map into a different time map layers. As you can see, for example, they have the same color that I set up by basically here using the, the module light. Okay. Now, other change that is quite interesting is the one that has to do with Parallax. Now, we have this new Parallax 2D node that basically uh, this is meant to replace Parallax background and Parallax layer. Um, because, well, how we used to do this to create a new Parallax background would be, well, firstly, uh, the, the background and you would actually have the, the Parallax layer as a child. Okay. And then inside of here, you would put your own sprites 2d okay and then in this um parallax background you would have uh, your each corresponding uh, parallax layer with your corresponding sprites okay but now uh this has changed slightly with parallax 2d so the idea is that um so now basically what you can do is to go ahead and add your parallax 2d node as you can see, I am getting no warning because if I add a parallax layer with no background, I get this warning telling me that it must be child of a parallax background node, so it can be used on its own. And basically, uh, I can add here uh, any kinds of sprites that I would want. And once again, this would work exactly like this, okay, without needing to have the parallax background. And also, it contains some of the key features that the parallax background node has you can set see here the scroll properties that as you can see we still get them of course here in the in the parallax 2d of course maybe they are named differently they work differently but the core of it remains the same and by the way if you have a existing parallax backgrounds and layers you can basically select your parallax background click over here convert to parallax 2d and it will convert the parallax background into a node 2D and you will have converted your parallax layer into parallax to the node. So again, quite simple to adapt to new uh, to these uh, new nodes. And uh, the last change that is worth mentioning has to do with groups. They work in the exact same way, but now you have two different groups, sync groups and global groups. They are self-explanatory, basically sync groups you can only assign them in the current scene, basically in the scene in which they were created. And global groups can be assigned for any for every node, for any node, sorry, in any scene. So for example, now you would click here, and also the interfaces have changed. And I will create here a new scene group that I will call main. You can uh, add the description only if it is global. Okay, here I would be able to add a description. But if not, I am not going to be able to add any. So here I will have it as a sync group. So I would be able to have any kind of uh, node inside of this group by just uh, checking this checkbox. So it is quite simple and straightforward. Um, instead of having to type manually the, the group name. And also you can, by, by simply clicking here, you're going to be able to copy the, the group name to the clipboard to be able to use it inside of your scripts. And for example, if I go ahead and create a new sim, as you can see, I don't have access to this sync group. But if I go ahead and add a new global group, I will call it global. And I will make it global. I will add a description 
okay i do have access here and of course i am going to be having access um in this other scene so these were all the changes that i wanted to mention in terms of growth 4.3 release candidate 3 as i already mentioned there aren't big changes that you should be expecting as any release candidate it doesn't contain major bug fixes or major new stuff that is worth mentioning and checking out in a video but well, Growth 4.3, the official release, is super, super close to us, and I am um, always uploading the latest Growth news in terms of versions and all that has to do with that. So if you really want to always stay tuned with the latest Growth news, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. I will see you in the next one, and bye-bye. Have an amazing day.